Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar which is about uh, visual design. Uh, we already talked about the basics of rendering, the settings that make the rendering uh, efficient and fast and beautiful. And today uh, we step beyond those basics and we will talk about uh, a little bit about uh, additional features that are not necessarily core basic features that you must know at the, at the beginning when you start uh, doing the visuals. And uh, also I will uh, try to make some sort of practical suggestions uh, that you should follow when uh, you are creating your visuals with uh, Arshline XP. And in the end, we will also talk about our product, uh, our, our additional product, a separate product, which is live. Uh, how to how to communicate with that and how to pass over your uh, model to to live and how to uh, dress it up and how to produce uh, realistic videos and visuals in literally seconds. So today uh, I'm uh, I'm about to use this project that you can see on screen now, which is uh, from one of our users, and we are very thankful for that. This is actually part of a larger uh, apartment building. As you can see, the, uh, the building shape itself was kind of irregular <laughs> and it's, well, it was actually uh, part of a, um, a project where the, where the interior designer had to uh, dress up all the, all the rooms, all the separate uh, parts of this apartment in several different versions of uh, interiors. So to be able to uh, visualize what happens if you use this or that certain uh, type of fabric and so on to, so that the clients can easily decide what to what to do and, and which, which uh, option to purchase. Now let me just enlarge this uh, screen. Now what I will use is a kind of a stripped down version of that project uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity and uh, I would like to be able to represent everything in a very very fast uh, uh, manner so what I did I just kept only the, um, the the bedroom of this and the corridor and what I will start uh, doing first I will show you how to create the uh, walkthrough animation and I will use only those two uh, two rooms in this uh, apartment now um, this what I, whatever I, I show you today is uh, good for interiors, exteriors, uh, small and large projects. There's no no very big difference between those uh, uh, in respect of what we will do today. Uh, so the first thing what I will show you is how to create uh, walkthrough animations in the software. Uh, everything that you are about to create as a visual uh, rendering in the end or a, or a panoramic 360 or, a, or an animation, those uh, features you can find in the, in the view menu. And what I'm, I'm willing to talk about first is the animation itself. Now this, this animation is walkthrough animation. That means uh, Archland XP uh, animates the camera, not objects. So you won't have moving objects, but uh, you will uh, walk uh, through this uh, interior or in or outside the building uh, as you wish uh, in a quality what you can see on screen now. So and, and after this, I will show you also how to create rendered uh, results, which are uh, also uh, kind of uh, interactive walkthroughs of the of the, of the project that will be the uh, Panoramic 360. So first talking about the animation, the animation is a tool that starts with uh, defining a path that, that that will be the path that you would like to walk through. So I'm, I'm going back to the 2D keeping the 3D on the side and uh, I will just, uh, you know, draw a path. Let me say I'm, I'm kind of approaching uh, this uh, bedroom from the uh, corridor. So to be able to do that, I will use this animation and the path option. So I will go with the define path. That, that's the first thing. Uh, you need to pick points from the drawing and those those uh, points will be the, the key frames of your animation. That means the, the, the software has to pass through that, those points and from those points you will determine what to see on the, in those points and everything in between the software will automatically uh, calculate based on those information. Now when you uh, create the path you can pick the first point and the second point, the third point. You don't have to click on existing items. I'm just uh, doing that because uh, those are in equal distance uh, from each other, which is a good thing. Uh, if you are, if you're designing the path, uh, you should keep uh, clicking similar distances between each uh, 
points if you would like to uh, create a ready to use smooth animation. There are other ways as well, but this can be, especially for beginners, this can be a very good thing to follow that you should uh, keep clicking in a, in a way where you can keep the same distance or similar distances uh, between all those um, key points that you are about to pick now. So it's each one is one single click. Now you have the path, as you can see, this is a spline, so it will be a nice smooth curve. Um, and when, you are, when you're done with this, uh, you can just simply tell the software that you're finished with that by simply hitting enter. And then the next step, the following uh, procedure is to, is to define uh, what to see from each and every uh, key points that you have picked up. So now I, I believe I, I created eight or seven key points. So I need to uh, do that from each seven key points, what I would like to see from those. So when I'm approaching this whole thing from the corridor, first I would like to see through the door. So that's that's a fine direction. I think in this, this uh, specific case as well. So the, the, the second and the third perhaps should be the same. But when I'm inside this room, I should turn the, the, my head to the right and a little bit more to the right and a little bit more to the right. So each time I was just simply uh, clicking once so that you can imagine that the camera is go going in and turning around and looking uh, on the side where you can see the actual uh, image uh, painting on the wall, which you will see soon in the, in, in the 3D. So uh, just imagine how you would move your camera uh, through or your mobile in your hand, how you would move that. Uh, what sort of path you would take uh, when you would record it by yourself and just uh, try to copy that virtually here in this, uh, in this, on this drawing. So now what we have here is, is a finished path. So I don't need to uh, do anything else with that. So I just hit enter and the software offers the animation path height. Now, in many cases, uh, I, will, I just go with the default uh, because uh, when I preview this animation, then I decide what sort of heights I take. But it is good to know that the general height uh, you can set up here. Now, the basic height will be something about uh, 1500. And if you would like to change the observer height, the target height, you should uh, just select any of those. You can, you can single click any of those items or you can just uh, click it on the first and shift click on the last one and then type the new value at the bottom saying like, I don't know, like I would like to do something from 1400 and 1400 will be the will be the uh, target height as well. And I added the selection, added the selection. So now both is copied. Now again, here is a basic rule. If it's not necessarily, you should not tilt the camera down or upwards because that will give a strange result that the perhaps the your clients won't really understand especially they won't really feel the space uh, natural uh, that will be either smaller or larger so so you shouldn't move with the camera tilted upwards or downwards it, it is kind of strange sometimes but uh, if you just uh, go go ahead online and check what sort of videos other other uh, designers produce that will give, give you a, a good idea just look for the professional results okay so now what I uh, decided is is that the base uh, eye level, the base camera level and the base target level is the same. So I will have nice vertical um, verticals and there, there will be no uh, perspective uh, distortion. And then I'm just uh, keep moving, moving this way. And then when I want, I will change the, the height if it's necessary. So this is what I've done and I hit OK. So now after that, the software automatically generates a preview of this animation. And this preview of the animation at first approach could be pretty fast, like this. It is extremely fast. And it is simply because the whole anima animation takes not more than one and a half uh, seconds. And then it, this is really, really fast. So you should be able to determine the length in time, not just uh, the path. So that is something that you can uh, determine using this cogwheel here. If you click on the cogwheel, you can decide the time, the frames per second, and so on. All sorts of de details uh, are, are to be set here. But what I'm willing to set here is is the length, and I believe this should be around like like nine or twelve um, twelve seconds. I'm just using twelve here, and I'm and I'm saying okay. And then see the the software automatically recalculates the path uh, based on the new time. So now if you just do this and then you see the result is 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 a little bit small. Uh, I mean slower, 
and then we end up end up in the room and we turn around. Now there are a few things that we should fix with this uh, with this video yet, and one is the background and one is the door. Uh, now we have an issue with the door. Now we just pass through the door, which is quite unnatural. So uh, what we need to do with that door, we need to either open it or maybe uh, completely remove it if, if it's something that is, is, is in an obstruction but you can easily uh, open openings by clicking on them and changing their properties now this is something that you cannot do in the in the animation editor this is an animation preview so this is for the animation only so you can't select anything you can't click on really an anything you can't change their properties so to be able to do that i'm simply closing this and i will show you how to get back here and then I uh, turn the camera around here in the 3D just to check the result that we are about to uh, do now. Let's see, this is the door itself. So now I either select it here or in the 2D, but in the left hand side I can see an opening angle. And if I click on the opening angle, I can type anything between uh, 0 and uh, I believe 120, so you can, you can open it very, very uh, wide. But I will do it something like 70 uh, degrees, so it is slightly open, uh, not fully open, so it's not touching the wall or something like that. Uh, and this is also a good option uh, to be able to check uh, kind of uh, geometrical collision, so I, uh, I perhaps should move this uh, furniture a little bit away because now it's intersecting with the door, but uh, okay, now we can just skip that. Uh, you can just open the uh, the door and then, then when you pass through uh, with the animation, it will be much better. So what I will do now, because I've closed the animation uh, window, and this is actually what will happen when you close the project and reopen it, the, the animation window will, will be gone, uh, but the path is there. So what you can do is you can right click here and you can say, okay, create animation. Uh, this is where I left, where I've left off, and this is the new animation with the new geometry. You didn't have to rebuild the 3Ds, by the way. It's just, uh, just uh, quickly regenerated for the animation itself. And then uh, now you can just click on play, and you can see the result. Now we can see through the door. You can see approaching the bedroom, and then we just turn around and just uh, having a look at the uh, this this surface here, uh, which has a nice painting. Now uh, with the background. And by the way, this this um, timeline here has a, a playhead, which you can actually just scrub through the timeline easily. You just pick it up and I'm just holding left mouse button and I'm just moving left or right. You can just, you know, uh, dial this uh, anywhere in this uh, in this path and uh, this timeline. And you can check whether you like the result or not. And now the issue with the background is that it is actually a photograph, so it won't follow anything that changes around with the model because it's just a, just a poster behind the camera. And now it looks like the, the model itself is turning, turning around in front of the, the background, which really, happen, which really it is. It, this is what happens now. So uh, to have a realistic background, you should either use something that we call uh, a 3D panel. You just draw a wall, you just stretch a, a material on it with a, with a photograph. Or, or even better, you just simply use uh, a panoramic background. And so now this is something that you can uh, do in the 3D. So let me just uh, turn the camera back to where we can see what's outside. And this is uh, this is one of those like like that here uh, and I'm just uh, going to the environment background and here you can select the color a color gradient an image or you can select the panoramic background now panoramic backgrounds which are built in the software those are uh, um, samples from the pexels.com which I recommend you to go there this is a nice free stock uh, page for free stock images uh, I'm sorry uh, openfootage.net the, the photographs are from uh, pexels.com openfootage.net is the source for these uh, nice backgrounds you can uh, find trials uh, there as well and you can purchase backgrounds from, from there so now these are in HDR format and that those are not just wrapping around the model but if you do the renderings they are also having some light information on them and that will give you a nice result so now I'm I'm only using it for the background as for the for the animation so I'm just accepting this if I would like to I can change the panorama direction but I don't uh, mind if it's if it's uh, like default or, or a different version and now you can see that it is changed in the animation editor as well so now if I go back and start playing it again uh, it is much better because when we approach the bedroom and we are getting to the side of this uh, this, this corner of this um, bed uh, then we can see that the background is nicely turning around so now this is much better I will keep that this is fine 
there's another thing with this that uh, unfortunately the beginning of this uh, animation is 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 rather boring it's it's uh, five seconds just approaching the door so we should uh, either modify the the, the path uh, which can be done by just simply closing this and finding the animation and clicking on the uh, node and either moving that or erasing that or inserting a new node but now i would like to shorten that so i just delete this node like this so now it's shorter it will be less boring passing through this uh, empty corridor so i'm just going there and create the animation again and now now i'm there here but still this is not uh, an appealing look uh, we should somehow change the camera height it would be much better to kind of uh, starting from a lower position like we are holding the camera in our hands and then we raise it to the eye level so this is something that you can do uh, in the animation editor by uh, using a very very simple method that you use anyhow uh, during design and that is just you know hold the mouse wheel and keep moving your mouse to, to decrease the camera height this is what you do and then now when you release the mouse button and you start scrubbing this timeline you can see that it will increase its height to the kind of eye level which we designed before which was at uh, 1400 and if we just uh, start playing that this is what happens this is much better i believe uh, but if you would like to you can do the same thing in each and every keyframes now it's important that whenever you change the camera position here in between those keyframes nothing will happen you can change the camera position only in keyframes so if you would like to jump right onto this keyframe you should use this control with the uh with the green dot on that so that will jump right there and then you can just do uh, refinement so this should not f reach its final uh height so it, it should it should just increase to that and at this second i mean third uh, elevation point should it reach its final height so this is what i'm i'm willing to do so let me just go back yes and start playing it's nice it's it's increasing its height and then finally it's approaching its final height and now we have a much better look and I believe this is something that we can keep and we can just render. So if we render this, I mean, this is not really rendering. We won't create photorealistic results uh, out of this, uh, uh, this this animation. The software is not providing that feature here because that would take very, very, very long time. It's, you know, if your image, if one single uh, image takes, uh, at, let's, say, let's say a fast render takes, for example, 10 minutes. Uh, in that case, uh, just imagine that uh, counting by 20 frames per sec, if you would like to create a 10 seconds uh, uh, animation, how long that would be. So the software is not, uh, not allowing that uh, option. It is simply uh, providing the feature to save this as a, a regular AVI files, file in this quality, which will be absolutely fast to, to produce. It's just, you know, literally going through and ta -ta 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 taking the, uh, the, the snapshots and then saving the video. You don't even have to find the codec or anything like that. It will be a ready to use AVI file that you can upload to YouTube or you can just feed it into any sort of uh, video processor that you would like to use for that. You can add the title or anything like that. Okay, so this is what you would do. If you would like to create a nice path, path through, uh, walkthrough animation uh, in this interior. One side note here, a practical uh, notice. You should avoid creating extremely long uh, walkthroughs uh, when you, you know, start from the entrance and you just go uh, through your whole apartment in one go because that will be most of the time it will be simply boring for the viewer uh, and uh, it is very easy uh, to make mistakes on a long path and then it will be very difficult to fix it so i really suggest you to take short um, short shots like i don't know 12 seconds 40 seconds but don't do large uh, long set long shots uh, and then use an image uh, uh, video processor uh, to you know just simply uh, cut those videos through and title them and then uh, ship them to your users they are free uh, image uh, editors as well that you can use so um, talking about this if you would like to add another animation uh, which is for example an animation that is looking around in this room nicely slowly so, so we can discuss with the client what happens here uh, why uh, I decided to to put those things over there and so on uh, in that case, uh, there is another way uh, to design the path and this will be a, a so-called closed path. So I'm just closing this one and I design a closed path. That will be actually a circle inside the room, in the, in the center of the room. So I'm just using the path and uh, I use the define path option. And then I pick the first point 
and then to have a nice even uh, and smooth uh, walkthrough I designed this circle with uh, with, with four uh, you know quads um, all these these four points of this uh, circle so I will just uh, choose the closed path option on the right hand side and then I pick this point I pick this point and I'll pick this point. It's not not a problem if it's more like an egg shape like than a circle. It's okay. Uh, you won't notice this. That is not a perfect uh, circle. But the point is that you should design a nice round uh, closed shape. And then when you hit enter, then you can decide uh, what to see when you start uh, start with this animation. So we we start at this this point, and then from that point, I should look at the opposite corner of the room. So this is what I do. I just click here. From here I click over there, from here I click over here, and from here I click over here. And there is one final touch. The first point is also actually the last point, so uh, also there you need to pick the, the last point uh, as, the, as it was the first again. So this is, this is how you design this closed circle, and then you say enter. And again, the same question, now I, I go with the default, and I say OK. And then now let's just see uh, whether we like this result or not. Well, it's extremely fast, so we don't like this, this result. So what I will do, I will just again change the length first. Now the length is here in time, and uh, you would probably think that uh, 20 or, 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 or 15 will be enough. But as you can see, because of how fast the, the, the surrounding changes, it will be still, still very, very fast. So if I do that, and I just turn around, see it's, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to catch up, catch the details. So of course it's a personal taste as well, but if you would like to create something that is easy to digest, uh, you should just stop that. And you can even go with a larger value like 40 or something like that. So let's just go a nice, smooth and slow animation like this. And then in this case, this is what we will end up with. So let me just stop here and start with an interesting part like this here. So this is, this is what we have now, and this is much better. We can discuss with the client, and it's, it's easy to digest, easy to see what happens. So, uh, and again, now I don't like the position, but instead of changing each and every keyframe, I would like to lower the whole thing, uh, like per perhaps 200 millimeters. In that case, I just simply close this, I go back to the path, and I, go, and I click on this option, and I say, I would like to set the node heights in one go, all of them. So I'm just uh, clicking here and I say that, okay, this should be uh, 1300 around, edit the selection and the same goes for the target height. This should also be, uh, sorry, uh, this should also be 1300 edit selection. Okay, and then right click and create animation. And then now when I play it, we can see uh, much better, even the floor is visible, it was not there before. I can see the bottom of these uh, this furniture and so on. I can, I can even uh, lower it a little bit more if I uh, fancy that. So this is this is how it ends and the same way you can save this as, an, as a video file uh, on your uh, desk. One uh, uh, advice here uh, that actually the, the paths are also drawing items so you can just organize them on layers i usually create a layer uh, which is called sort of like animation and just let me just do that uh, i just create something like that so i can just easily turn it off on or on, on or off because sometimes i don't like to see these uh inside my design when i'm working with that uh, so what i do i just simply pick those points and i put this onto the layer called animation that i've created and i usually usually also change their uh, their color kind of gray or sometimes I use the blue blue tone and uh, with a um, dash line so I can or, or a dotted dash perhaps so I can see that those are those are my animation paths and this is what I uh, like to see here sometimes I also add a symbol at the end I'm sorry this is the other one and the, on the, this one I can change the uh, the symbol itself I can change the size of the symbol if I uh, would like to scale it down and perhaps this would be much better in a smaller size or something like that. So I can I can see that there's a path going that way. Uh, so this is this is also something that you can uh, easily do. And then when you apply it to the proper layer, you can just simply uh, switch it off at any time if you don't want to see during design. Okay, so this is how to create uh, animations. This is, these are the basic rules. Um, you sh again you should uh, keep uh, in mind that uh, everything 
uh, each and every keyframe should be at even distance from from each other because then it will be much more easy to handle if you don't want to if you if you would like to go with for a different effect go ahead try it uh, but you should avoid uh, uh, creating a, um, an animation where uh, speed is changing continuously and uh, camera is just you know flipping around and and this this will be uh, not not a not a um, an easy uh, animation to watch for your client so keep going for the for this move uh, first and then you can uh, go ahead and and uh, try even more details okay so uh, this is about the animation all the animation tools are here you can create the path and everything else is also here and the result is a an avi file that you can easily uh, send to your clients. The other thing that I'm willing to show you today is the Panoramic 360. The Panoramic 360 is a built-in feature. It has a set panorama la layer first option and uh, sometimes I even uh, put it to the animation or I just name the layer as animation and uh, other visuals or something like that. Uh, so you can pick up a layer where uh, all the elements of the Panoramic 360, all the visual clues, which which I'm willing to place uh, soon, are are organized to, and then you can also turn them on or off uh, at will. So I just use the same um, animation layer that I've created before, uh, but this is also something that you can change later if you forgot to do that uh, initially. No worries. Uh, and the and the following thing that you should do is you should place a camera. Now. Uh, the, the difference between the animation and the, and the, and the VR uh, walkthrough is that the animation uh, is going through a specific path exactly the way you have designed it. Uh, the, the VR animation is designed to be interactive. So here you set key cameras where, the, uh, where, where your uh, clients can go to and look around freely. So this is why you will place uh, as many cameras as many spots you would like to, your clients to be able to explore. So today I'm willing to place one in the corridor and another one inside this bedroom. So the first one is uh, called, it should be the, the corridor camera, so I name it accordingly, corridor. Yeah, and its height is also important. It should be uh, 1,300, that's fine. Uh, you, sh you can go with the realistic uh, eye level based on your client's uh, guest eye level, or you can just go with the default. You will see that this is also a, a fine option, so I just keep that. And then you can place this camera somewhere in a drawing. So you just click here, and then there is a camera. Now, this camera uh, is only one, so to be able to create a Panoramic 360 a VR uh, experience, you should at least have two cameras. So uh, your client will have at least the minimal uh, interactivity. So you will place another one. This will be the same symbol and you will just go with uh, the name of the bedroom. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 1300 and I place it over here. Now, whatever you have here uh, is, is also a drawing symbol. So you can just move it uh, around. You can just place it wherever you would like to. And the default view, the first view that your uh, this, uh, client will see is the, is the point where your camera is pointing to now. So this is actually the wall here. And well, I don't really like the idea to see a wall when we arrive to this room. So I will just click here and click on this, um, you know, rotation marker and then you can just rotate it the way that it looks outside the window, which is a much better uh, scenery that we can see. So, and to check what we see from that camera, you can just simply right click on this camera and say, set up perspective view. And this is actually, by the way, something that you can find here. This is the view camera option that th those two are the same. And so now this is what we see initially. I, th I think it's pleasing, so we should keep that. And then from here, we can uh, look around, that will be fine. And now let's just check the other camera. Well, well, obviously this is not a perfect view because if I just use this option and I go uh, with view the camera, I just use the plaster wall. This is not nice. So I just select this and I turn it around so I can see through the open door. And then I check it again, use the same option, view camera or the local menu, whichever is absolutely okay. And then this will be the first view that we can see, which is perfect, I, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Now to be able to travel through uh, this space uh, using these cameras, from jumping from one camera to the other and look around. We also need uh, hotspots uh, um, where we can travel through to be able to go to the other room or the other uh, camera. 
And those are things that you can find here. And these are the link hotspots, or we can also call them portals. So what you what you do when you click here, you need to select the symbol. This is a, a so-called portal where you enter at one point and then you exit on the other side and vice versa. So when you click OK, then you can also set up the height of this, uh, this, this hotspot. Uh, this portal won't be named because as you will see it is automatically taking the name of the other room that you can travel to so it's okay uh, with, the, with the height only and then you need to pick up the two cameras that will see uh, this hotspot and uh, that can be used to travel through from one point to the other and from the other to the to the first one so I click on this one first and the other one first and then I need to place this hotspot somewhere uh, in the 3d space now it is uh, advised that you should place them around uh, places where we would anyhow naturally transfer uh, between those rooms so it is it is okay to place it on a door or something like that because that will be uh, the natural point that your clients will look at in the 3d space and okay that's a door so i i should be able to pass through that door uh, and then you can just keep going if you have multiple cameras then you can just connect all, all, all of those and you can actually uh, build up a network of those cameras and hotspots and if you would like to check whether you have forgotten or, or not to, to link those two you only need to click on the uh, the portal and then the software will tell you uh, how it is connected to the other two cameras so if you are creating the panoramic result in the end and the software is telling you that uh, this is not a healthy uh, panoramic 360 you cannot uh, use it then this is what you should check okay the, and there is one another thing before i show you the result and that is the uh, the info point now if you would like to add additional information of uh, certain elements not all of them because that will be just uh, you know a plethora of information but if you would like to uh, place only one or, or two items that you would like to because they are highlighted they are so special or this they, they are something that you discussed with your clients and you would like to uh, them to have a, ni a nice name or perhaps a, tri pr a price tag and even a link then you can do that if you click here you can just say okay this is something that I would like to see uh, from this camera only the, the other camera shouldn't see I, only this camera should see this and then I just add the description so this should be Perhaps so I'm, I'm adding a, a tag or an information tag for this lamp, for example. This is a, a bedside lamp, so I will just name it, for example, like Osaka lamp. And it is, I don't know, like uh, 30,000 uh, Japanese yen or something like that. And then I'm going with a URL as well. If I, if I, if I have a nice... Uh, um, product page somewhere for this Osaka lamp I can just uh, name it I just uh, use an image generating uh, website which will be like www.osakalamps.co.jp uh, or something like that it's uh, I believe it's non-existing so we will land on an non-existing web page but you can uh, paste anything here and you can say okay and then you just paste it wherever you want it. Uh, so it will be floating somewhere here in thin area at 1300, uh, which will be nice and it will be only visible from the bedroom. So let's just create the result finally. So we, we added the cameras, as many as we want. We connect all those cameras using uh, those portals to be able to pass through from one camera to the other one. And then we can place uh, info, info points as well in the 3D. So if we are done with that, we just go with the build, uh, build virtual tool. I'm using the draft mode now, and this is something that you can also render. I'm simply using the draft mode for the sake of time, and I just save it. I already saved one before, so I just named this O2. And I, when I click on save, the software actually just quickly creates this uh, automatic uh, uh, virtual walkthrough, and it will open. Uh, it actually opened on my other screen, so let me just bring it in and this is what you will see automatically so it started with the view that we have designed and then it starts auto scrolling around and you can just use the mouse wheel and just you know uh, I mean the mouse button and you just drag it and turn turn around wherever you would like to look at and this is something that you can use uh, with your mobile so you just take your mobile and you just uh, put it into any of those um, plastic boxes 
uh, VR boxes. Those are not the ones that are for very, very pricey um, solutions, but those are the cheaper solutions where you, those are just cases where you just put your camera in and you just open this file, which is a, a simple HTML. It is very easy to uh, include into any sort of uh, email or something like that. It's one single file. You don't have to uh, even zip it or something like that. And you just share it with your clients or you just copy it to your phone and just paste it here. And then you can look at look around if you have a gyro in the uh, in the in the mobile phone, which uh, which many of the most of the uh, mobiles have. Then you can just freely look around. Uh, so this is actually what you will see uh, when you use uh, your hand as well, and you just uh, you can just easily pass through one um, room to the other. And if I go to the bedroom, and now I'm looking at uh, this uh, information on the, in the desktop, then I can. Uh, hover my mouse over this information so I see the price tag on that if I and if I click on that I will just land up on this non-existing web page which if you obviously use a, a, a real web page you will land uh, over there so uh, and let me show you let me also show you what you will see uh, inside the, the camera this is the switch that you should turn on in that case if you just put it into the, this case in that case the software will auto automatically create a, a dual view for both of your eyes and then you will also see uh, a nice, uh, you know, like like targeting reticle or something like that. So you just uh, you can just uh, move your mouse and look at this point. And when you look at that, it will turn red, and then you just automatically land in the other other room. So obviously you don't have to do this with the uh, with with your finger and and the VR uh, VR box. You just uh, you just naturally look around and you just target the. Uh, the exit of that room and then you can just pass through and travel which is very very nice uh, as you can see this uh, took only literally seconds to be able to generate and even if it's larger it's very very fast and we can see something where the where the client can feel the distances and the sizes of these things uh, even if it's not rendered now obviously if this would be rendered it would take much longer uh, we actually created uh, version of this uh, this whole apartment with with, with all the details uh, previously with I believe 10 or 12 cameras uh, high definition and it took like 12 hours to render it, render it fully so it will take obviously much longer but the result will be also different so so far this is about uh, animation and panorama 360 and this is what I wanted to cover when we talk about those uh, features I should I suggest you to try the rendered version as well of this panoramic 360 it will be also uh, very nice uh, the third topic today that I'm willing to discuss is the materials and for that I will just jump in this 3d and then navigate into one of these default views and I would like to create a few renders and talk about special materials, special settings and how to deal with those and how to uh, make them pretty. Now the first thing that I would like to focus on is this uh, ceiling lamp here and so to be able to show you what I'm willing to, to do now is I'm just going with the standalone rendering real-time draft and I just go with the default settings that's fine and by the way now I'm using the 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 image background this is something that if I would like to use the panoramic background I can just click click here inherit a background from the 3d model but now because I also would like to show you another thing I intentionally use the image instead of that so I just start rendering like this and then um, and then it starts rendering uh, hope the uh, I'm sorry it, it appeared on the other screen uh, hope the the streaming won't break up because of the rendering but uh, if it does please just let me know and i uh, try to do something with that so now what we see here is this ceiling lamp and uh, now there's one specific material feature that you can set up for ceiling lights like this and that is the blurry transparency now um, we talked about this before if you would like to find the material settings of one specific material on screen you can just right click on it and you can say okay find this material for me the software finds that material and you can tweak the material settings now here at the left hand side you can see this the thing that i'm talking about and this is the blurriness of transparency which is in this case it's uh, zero which results in um, in a shade which is kind of like a uh, a see-through plastic or something like that you, you cannot see this this light distribution inside the material so if I would like to uh, to do that uh, I just uh, increase this uh, I will just increase it a, a, in a large value now so we can see how it changes as the light distributes inside the material as well so now we will have a nice uh, semi-transparent uh, blur transparent uh, result which is 
for the majority of these uh, items when we, uh, those are the, for example, the transparent track textiles. If it's not completely 100% see-through, you should apply this uh, setting for that. Uh, one another uh, quick tip about materials. We can see those nice lampshades over there. Those are intentionally non see through because they have uh, a plastic. I mean, a plastic inside and the material and the and the fabric outside. Uh, but there is something that I would like to show you here. And now, naturally, uh, this uh, user here uh, turned uh, on the. Uh, the, the reflection uh, of this material here inside, which it results in a nice rendering. This, this is okay, this is absolutely fine. But uh, if it's a large surface, it takes a lot of computing power to calculate reflections, which we can barely see here. So what I'm willing to do here is uh, I would show you that you can actually go with the cheaper uh, solution, I mean, rendering wise. Uh, so it will be less costly in rendering time. And then you can just simply change this from mirror to matte, which I previously uh, told you to try to avoid because it's non-realistic, uh, but it is not for the uh, emissive surfaces, surfaces like this uh, or, 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 or strongly lit uh, surfaces like this. If you see, the result is pretty, pretty much similar, but now the, the, the rendering takes uh, a little bit shorter here because it is not calculating actual reflection. So in situations like this, um, in internal parts of lamps or shades, you can just simply turn uh, from metal to mud if it, if, it, if it is okay for that result uh, that you can see. You, can at you should at least test it because it will uh, end up like this uh, many times and it is uh, faster to render. So this is about the lampshade that I wanted to show you. Yeah. Let's turn our head and see something else uh, on the other side uh, with the curtains, for example. Now, this nice curtain here, and to avoid uh, confusion, uh, let me just change the, the environment back, background back to where it was uh, previously. So this is what we will see in the rendering as well. So now what I see now is this here. Uh, I would like to open this a little bit before we work with that and say, okay, this should be opened a little bit. It should be like 20% between the two. And software recalculates it so now it's now it's open but I uh, would like to change how this material looks like because it's now just too perfect I can just see through too perfectly and I will just use the same value I used before it's the blurry transparency and you will see how nicely it ends with with the nice results so instead of this I'm willing to create something like uh, this I just found this material and I find this uh, blurry uh, transparency and I just increase it only 1% and that will be enough if you just go back to the render this is what you will end up and if you uh, just imagine if you just use a yeah you know, I don't know like a lace texture or something like that this will be much better now there is something uh, that sometimes uh, when we talk about these materials uh, comes in uh, as an info in, in, important information now let's just discuss uh, about the uh, how the renderer works a little bit before we move on. And just as we discussed it per, 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 previously in a different session, uh, the rendering is uh, using the full computing capacity, the raw computing uh, power that your uh, computer can provide. And in case of the internal render that we are using now, it is the, uh, the CPU and the memory. Uh, now, in case of live, it will use the GPU as well, but that will be uh, at the end of this session. Now, what you can see, it's calculated on the CPU, the processor, and, and in the RAM, which is the uh, memory. Now, uh, and, and, and it's also important, and this is why I'm suggesting uh, these, uh, these things as well, that you always pay with time when you do the rendering. So you should focus on the most important materials. We, we also discussed that. So the most dominant mat materials are the ones that you should focus first and then the rest. Uh, now, for, on this image, for example, I also need to focus on this uh, uh, material, which will be uh, an emissive surface. So I will just change that. And there later we will talk about uh, uh, a mirror surface, which uh, I will also show you uh, how to set up perfectly. So focus on the uh, major material first and the rest will just uh, work fine, even if you don't have time for those, if the, if the main materials are okay. Um, 
And here is, an, here is an issue. What we can see here, and this is also based on material settings, what we can see here uh, differs from, from the background, what we can see here. This is some sort of a blurry background, and whatever I do, it will be still blurry. And I show you the secret why, why that happens. And the secret actually lies uh, with how the software um, interprets uh, reality. And this is for the index of refraction. And the majority of the materials, especially when we talk about water, uh, glass surfaces, the transparent materials have something that we call IOR or, or index of refraction. Now, index of refraction is uh, for this sort of fact that you perhaps um, so many uh, books or something like that is that when you uh, look at the water surface and there is a fish, the fish is actually not there uh, where you see the fish, but because of the index of refraction, because the light travels uh, with different speed uh, between different medias, mediums, uh, it is just, you know, banding kind of the kind of we can see uh, at, at, at the limit of those uh, two mediums. And this is this is what happens. So naturally, light uh, changes its path when its path is through uh, surfaces. Why is it important for us now? It is because when you have a glass window, in case of the glass window, and we just discussed, this is an image, this is not wrapping the, the, around the, the, the model. If there is only an image, there is no information if the light bends to places where there is no image. So the software has to somehow cheat and this, is, this ends up in a result that we can see here, which will be blurry. Now, if you would like to fix that, there's a very easy fix. You should just eliminate this, uh, this feature, which naturally uh, happens, but in case of situations when you, when you don't have the real surrounding, when you only have a, a photograph, then you should fix it by changing the material properties of the, this window glass. So what I do here, I just find this material. I can see that this is actually a, a color card for the glass uh, 26. So I just go to the category and I just, uh, let me just find this in model. And this should be the glass uh, 26, and this is it. And I should just change its refraction, the IOR, it's here. Uh, I should change it from its natural 1.6 to 1, where this means there is no uh, index of refraction. Level uh, light uh, transfers through, travels through this medium without banding or something like that. And in that case, the result will be exactly, as you can see on screen, it will be nice and uh, pixel perfect the same uh, that you can see uh, in the 3D. So this is how you can fix that uh, situation. Okay, another thing, uh, I discussed this here. This is a uh, ref, um, I mean, um, it is an emissive surface. Uh, which behaves as a light source. So uh, there is a specific uh, material uh, called emissive, uh, real emissive in Archline. So you can just uh, right click on this uh, material surface, say you would like to find this material and go to the properties and find this uh, material uh, option, which is the render style actually. And it is called real emissive. Now in case of the real emissive, you can see it's kind of burned, which is something what we want, perhaps not, not this strong. So I just dial this down a little bit and see whether I like this result much better in the in the rendering. And well, this is perhaps uh, still to uh, burn out uh, version of this TV screen. But if I dial this down a little bit more and I check the result, I can see it happens. So I can just find the balance between the two easily. Uh, there is another thing that I'm willing to discuss and that is also uh, mirrors, how you should treat mirrors and how you should uh, set up mirrors. So now in this uh, project, we actually created a wrong version of a mirror, uh, which, uh, which describes actually the situation how and how to how to fix that. Now, if I render this, you can see that we have this mirror surface, but it does not look like a mirror. It's more like, a, I don't know, like a shiny plastic or something like that. Even though if I find this material setting, I can see that it is it is a mirror. So why it's not working? It is because of its uh, reflection. Uh, and this uh, solves everything. If you have a mirror, which you really would like to use as a mirror surface, you should use high reflectivity. So I'm just styling this up about, I don't know, 95 or something like that. It's, it's pretty high. Uh, if I go back to this uh, result, I can still see the tint of this uh, original uh, mirror color, but it is kind of a, a more perfect version uh, of this mirror. And this is something also what I like. Now you should keep that in mind that if you uh, dial up the the reflectivity to a perfect 100, uh, it will be really difficult to distinguish what is 
the mirror and what is the, the, the real room. Uh, to show you an example to that, I've created several versions of this, uh, of this image and, and to show you the connection between the color and the reflectivity as well. So let's just uh, talk about that first. So if I show you this slide, this is, this is actually describing uh, the connection between the color and reflectivity. If you can see at the left hand side, we have the image where color is fully effective and there's no reflectivity, zero reflectivity, then it is uh, that sort of turquoise uh, color that I have selected uh, first for this uh, mirror. But if I start increasing the reflectivity, I kind of start losing the color. Uh, this is the second image at the bottom, but I will have more uh, reflectivity. And in the end, uh, I just dialed it up to 100. So it's fully reflective. I completely lost all of its color. And most of the time, this is not what I want with, uh, with glass surfaces. So you should not dial it up perfectly. And there's another thing that you can do with uh, mirror surfaces as well. You can also add normal maps. If you see this uh, image, and you, now you should in, in, in enlarge uh, this presentation to full screen to, to see the details. Now the top image is a perfect mirror where what I did, I just uh, you know uh, dialed up the, the, the mirror uh, reflectivity to 95% and I didn't do anything else. But the bottom version where we can see those tiny nice imperfections of the, of the glass surface, those are done with the normal map which the, uh, the Arch Linux XP by default uh, um, provides. So all those tiny imperfections where the, where as you can, as if you compare with the, with the top screen, even the, uh, the, the tiny uh, wardrobe there is kind of bent or something like that. And this is because of the surface of the uh, mirror is not, not, not completely and perfectly flat. Uh, this is something that I've done with the normal map. Let, let me show you what uh, I did there. So I just uh, found this option here. Let me just go with this find material option. And this here, you can find the bump amplitude and it is, uh, now it's set to automatic surface by texture and then now I don't have texture. So I can just manually open up, open up a file and find a, a normal map. I just downloaded the normal map. If you go, if, if you Google for normal maps, uh, you can find nice normal maps. And even there are softwares to, to design your normal maps for, for, for things like this or for pocket or anything else. The software is also shipped with built in, uh, normal maps, but in case of this, I have downloaded one uh, from online. So this is also something that you can use. And it is a, it is a very, uh, easy uh, way of adding details uh, to your render to your materials. Okay, so these are these are the things that I wanted to talk about regarding the uh, materials. And uh, one side note here before I go on to the next topic, which is the final topic for today, is the f is the, it, that is the lights, and uh, it, it is the material reflection. So just as I highlighted in the previous session. Uh, most of the materials in reality, those are reflective. Even my t-shirt is reflective. That is not, mat, not not a matte surface. This is why it behaves the way it, way it behaves. But sometimes if you would like to uh, conserve computing power and if you would like to speed up rendering, you can use matte materials. Those won't calculate reflections. But as for the major surfaces, wall paintings, um, also uh, ceilings, pockets and so on, you should not skip that. You should not use flat uh, matte materials because that will break up the realism. Of course, you will end up with a uh, longer rendering, but I think that is something that we need to pay for those nice renders in this situation. Okay, so going back to uh, the final topic, this will be a very short one, just a few side notes. Uh, one is that uh, lights, uh, now Archline is coming with built-in lamps and lamps in Archline are objects with light sources. Now we discussed that, how to uh, create a uh, lamp site. We'll just quickly show you uh, that once again. Uh, but uh, it is an important thing that you can also use the built-in light sources or you can just import light sources, imported, import IES light profiles from uh, makers' websites. Uh, to show you a few examples, we included a few free uh, content here into the IES library. So this is how an IES light source looks like. Those are uh, standard light sources that the uh, manufacturer, the producer of these light sources measured and um, provides those usually for free uh, on their websites, which you can freely download and import and use them. Now, um, if you would like to create a lamp, I would like to show you again something that is a practical advice, how to find an issue and how to solve it. 
Now to be able to do that, I will just simply uh, turn my camera around and I will uh, you create um, a, a lamp. I will download the lamp from the 3D warehouse. I just go to interior 3D warehouse and I will just look for a pendant lamp. Uh, this will be pendant uh, lamp or something like that. And the one that I'm looking for is uh, especially, uh, especially this one. This is the one that features that specific thing that I'm willing to show you today. So I'm just uh, looking on this one and I download that and I will just use the SketchUp 2020 version. That is fine. I'm using the 2020 arch line. And then I'm downloading that and I will just place it right next to our surface. This is important. If you just downloaded something and if you would, would like to test it, you should test it. And then you should put it next to a surface. You can see how it behaves. And then you can place it anywhere else in your project. But the first thing that you should put it next to a wall. So I'm, I'm placing this on the floor. Later I will ele elevate it. I just place it around somewhere. Uh, sorry. I just place it around uh, here. Okay, let me just place it over there and then I move it around. Okay, so I just placed it. Uh, one copy is enough. I go back to the 2D. It will be very easy to fix that. I just click here, move it around somewhere here. And then I'll elevate it to, I don't know, like 1300. So it will be, it will float in thin air in front of me. 1300, enter, and that's fine. So now what I'm, I'm doing now, I just uh, click on render and I see that, well, okay, it seems like it's, uh, it's effective. It's doing something with its surrounding. And if I would like to highlight this, I can just uh, say that I would like to focus on this uh, specific light source only. Well, in this specific case, uh, perhaps it does not even have a light source. I can see there's no light bulb situation here. So I was wrong. It's actually the surrounding that uh, casts this, uh, this, this light around. So what I need to do first, I need to go on lighting and, and I need to add a light source. So this is what I'm doing now. I just add the light source. I just go with uh, one of the, the basic light sources. Uh, I mean, just go with this one and I just go with, uh, with an old style, uh, regular uh, light source like this. So now by default, this will be attached to the bottom of this light source. And many times when you import uh, an SKP file from, uh, from the warehouse, it will end up the same way. It will automatically attach a light source at the bottom of this uh, lamp. So you need to uh, find a better spot. You need to move it around. So now what I do, I, do, I just keep it now as it is. So we can see the, uh, whether if it's effective or not. Let's see the result. Yeah, it's effective, but obviously the position is wrong for this light source. So and I should elevate it someplace here. So I go back and say, okay, uh, go to the properties, uh, lighting menu and add edit light source. And here I just elevate it into the light bulb, which is a quite natural spot to choose. And I just check it from the top view. From top view, it's also in the center. So that's fine. I just go with that. And then now I check the result and the result is, is, is pretty bad. And, but it's, it's in the, in the, in the light bulb, but, uh, somehow it's not, uh, emitting any light source. And if you end up with something like this, there is two things that you should check first, whether the light source is on or not, but it is on, but I show you how to check that. If you click, uh, on, uh, either the 2d or the 3d, you will find on the left hand side, you will find the light sources and you can tell whether it's on and whether it's effective enough. We saw that before. So it's, it's, uh, it's luminous efficiency is fine. We should see that. So there is obviously another reason. And the, the other reason is 99% uh, of the situations it is not able to come out from the geometry. So now the geometry is a light bulb, but it is for some reason, it's not transparent. And it's because it was coming from an outside source and we cannot uh, guarantee that it will be transparent. Now this was wrong. So we, I need to fix that. So to be able to do that, I just select this lamp and go to the properties. And uh, in this uh, object property dialog, you can find something that is for the material list. If you click here, you can see all the materials of this, uh, of this lamp. If you zoom in, you can see there's the light bulb. And if you move your mouse over the light bulb service, you can, you can click on that and you can tell that the software, uh, uh, is showing this material. This is the translucent gloss, gloss gray, which is fine. Uh, this should be a gloss, but if I click on modify and then I click on edit, I can see that it is for some reason it's metal. I, that's, that's, the, that's one of the issues. So I should change it and I should uh, use a glass uh, material. That will be much better. I just hit OK and I hit OK. 
And well, this here is still not uh, transparent, but we will see in the, in, the, in the result, we will come back here soon. When I click OK and I just do the render, uh, the real-time rendering is still effective. I can see something, but it's still not the best. It, it, it does not really look like it is, it is nicely glowing or something like that. So there's another thing that I should fix in a situation like this. I don't wait for the final result. I should just go here, go into the properties again and say, I'm willing to fix this material and find this one. But it, the problem with this one, I will perhaps sometimes I, I won't be able to find it because it's um, now the issue with this uh, light bulb is it, it has, you know, the light bulb surface, it has two surfaces. One is the outside, which we, which we fixed, and one is the inside. And if the inside material is, is a default material, then it's, it's not good. So you should either go and use the same translucent material, but in that case, it will be too perfectly transparent. Uh, or you should just simply pick up another material, uh, which I will just pick this one now. You can create a new material. And we'll just pick this one and make sure that this material behaves the way you want. So you just click there, change its properties, uh, check its properties. And obviously, again, this is something of a not, not, not good setting. So I should just go with a um, glass material, but this should not be perfectly transparent. So instead of a 100% transparency, I just use a, a lower amount of transparency. So now I will see that when light uh, transfers through, it actually emits the surface and I mean, it's just uh, um, brights up the, the surface and I will end up with a much better result and I can just, you know, go on with these settings and then just keep keep fine tuning. But the, 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 the core issue that I wanted to show you is that when you place a light source and it is not emitting any sort of light, it is the majority of cases it is because if it is impossible to to render light sources out of that geometry because it is closed and it's there's no uh, way that light uh, can transfer through through those surfaces so this is how to fix those things and finally uh, if you still have got uh, 10 minutes I would like to show you uh, this new, uh, software uh, which we have as, a, as an additional software for Ashline and how to use that for architectural visual visualization and that is live now, in this specific situation, we have loaded uh, a, a project in Archline. We just uh, hit the transfer to a live option. And then this is what you will automatically see. Uh, this result here is the building uh, which is automatically surrounded based on the uh, light settings, based on the material settings that you have uh, set up uh, originally. And based on the location, you can change the, the light conditions easily. So what uh, we ended up with is this default re uh, result. We, this is what we will change and this is what we will uh, customize uh, when we are at that point. So well, I'm just finding the best location. And by the way, the software automatically generated those images. So you didn't even have to wait a second. The software uh, automatically saved those images. So if you would like to just you know, send uh, intermediate uh, rendered images to your clients that they're there, uh, you can just simply uh, send them using uh, using this little folder icon at the right hand side of this bar. All the material settings are there. So if you have set a wall to be a wall, if you have set a, a um, I don't know railing to be metal or something like that, you can see the exact same settings. You can tweak those settings. You can make it brighter. You can make it uh, dimmer. You can just change its reflectivity. You can see you will be able to see everything in real time, which is a, a very efficient uh, workflow. Uh, that you can um, do with the software. Now, what I'm showing you now, by the way, is what uh, each and every version of uh, Live can do. So there's no, no limitation uh, with, uh, with that. Uh, I'm saying that because uh, now uh, this is also a feature that is obviously still part of the 2020 version, which comes out very, very soon. You will see an announcement video of that, uh, but I'm not talking about the new features now. I'm just talking about the core features. So this is what you can also do. Now, what you see on screen, by the way, is GPU rendered. So now uh, the graphics card is, is fully in effect. So if you have a powerful graphics card, you will end up with very, very fast handling uh, no lag no lag uh, when you just turn around the camera and you can uh, work with very large and very dense models and by the way this is this is how this uh, software was designed as you can see um, this is not a very very powerful um, graphics card which I'm using uh, on this uh, tutorial now but it is still very fast it is not 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 even a very cheap one it is somewhere in between uh, but what I uh, can see on screen is all rendered real time 
uh, also the shadows, all the reflections, and all the materials that you can find in the software. There is built, there's a built-in library for the materials. And those are very nice, high detailed materials. You can also extend this library. You can import materials from ArchLine or you can create your own materials. As you can see, see the built-in materials are very, very nice detailed materials with all the tiny imperfections of that uh, cobblestone uh, surface as well. And this is only the materials, but if we talk about also the geometry, the software is also shipped with nice detailed geometry of cars, people, plants, and so on. You can even paint surfaces with, uh, with plants, uh, which I will show you in a second. So now if you just uh, bring in those nice detailed cards, you can just you know turn them around, all the basic uh, transformations, the move, uh, rotate scale are there for your convenience to use you just click and drag and you just move it uh, the way you want you can just change the change its uh, position uh, easily and then you can just add an additional copy and so the same applies for human uh, figures if you just go to the people library you can find those items you can just uh, bring them in you can just turn them around you can place them wherever you wish and of course again you can import objects to extend this library uh, of uh, any sort of decorative items that, that you would like to place. The same goes for the plants. Now the plants are uh, very detailed or so kind of living with the, with the nature. I mean there is actually uh, wind blowing around now uh, which is blowing the leaves of this uh, little hedge uh, here uh, but you will see it much better uh, in case of the trees. And also when you place something and you would like to just place multiple copies, you know, just you just select it and control C, which is for copy, and then you just control V, copy, paste, 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 and you can just change its size. You can add some uh, variability to that. Now, if I would like to, I can easily find something of, for example, a fireplace that there's a built-in fireplace. And again, you can import other objects from ArchLine. And then you can add neat, nice details, which we call them effects. Those are mostly um, kind of like dust, uh, smoke, uh, and fire. Uh, you can just bring it in and you will have a nice detailed fire, which is actually also lighting up its surrounding a little bit. Uh, you can see it in, in night scenery especially. So this is what you will uh, see by default. And as you can see, it's lightning fast. You don't have to wait for the results. And if you, if you would like to just with the one button click, you will end up with the results, which, uh, which are uh, either uh, animated videos or um, photographs that you will uh, end up saving. And also you just uh, pick up any of those trees. Uh, there, are, there are different sizes, different variations of the same uh, tree to be able to give a nice detail uh, to your surrounding and you can just keep adding those items not only by one by one but there is also a tool which we call it's a foliage painter uh, that if you if you use you can just uh, select any of those trees and tell the software okay now there are individual trees over there and over there this is what you would use when you would like to place the tree exactly to the to the spot where you would like to you want it to and if you would like to paint large surfaces, surfaces, then you can use this tool. You can just select a brush. You can actually edit those brushes. So now these are the, the default brushes, but you can click and drag another tree here and build up another brush. And with that brush, you can just click and hold the mouse button and then you just, you know, just spray this area with trees and then you just uh, paint the other area with other sort of trees and then the software is just keep changing their uh, orientation and so on uh, so you will end up with a nice uh, natural uh, result in the end so uh, well this is so far for the for the details of the of the trees and as you can see the the the, the, the leaves are moving the the wind is blowing those uh, tree leaves so i ended up with this result and then now if I would like to, I can easily create an animated version of this. Um, and also uh, this, this is a library which I imported from ArchLine. So uh, if I would like to, I can easily import objects from ArchLine or, SK, uh, or FBX files or OBJ files. And then, you know, I can just uh, bring it in and then I can just add the light source, for example, to this one. Uh, talking about lights, actually, uh, you can uh, edit lights and you can, uh, anything that is uh, having a light source in ArchLine when you design it, it will end up uh, as a lamp here in live as well. And you can change those uh, lamps easily by just simply selecting them and change their uh, intensity. 
and then if you would like to recreate the result that you see there because many things changed already from the first images you know you just click on the uh, expose uh, icon and then the software will just auto automatically create the new version of that image and it is really uh, literally seconds you can change the uh, resolution of this in the settings by default the, the resolution will be uh, full HD uh, as you can see now on screen so now what we see here now this is a lamp um, it was imported uh, with a light source and in that case you can change uh, its intensity you can turn it on or off and you can see those nice tiny uh, stickers we call them uh, so if you click on those stickers or markers you can see whether the light source is on whether it's effective or not uh, and you can also um, dial up the brightness or you can change the color or you can even change whether it's uh, casting any sort of shadows or it's just to help a helper light or something like that so, so this is how it goes. This is how you can edit all those things, uh, lightning fast in just one click. And then when you like the result, again, you can create the new images uh, by just simply selecting a uh, view and then just uh, take a photograph uh, once again. Or you can also create an animation. Now, uh, remember previously I discussed when with, with traditional ways, if you would like to create a walkthrough animation, uh, also you can create panoramic 360 here as well if you would like to create a walkthrough animation rendered result it would take very very long now in live live takes the animation path from ArchLine so if you already designed an animation path you can just use that play that and see whether you like it or not you can just edit it if you if you uh, like to and then if you like the result you can save it in a, in a video file now if you would like to you can also add new animation paths. Uh, this is very simple. You just select uh, the first uh, spot from where you would like to uh, start your animation from. So it's something like this, for example. You just create a new animation. And then you just uh, move your camera to the following key point. This is also uh, the same, same situation in live. Uh, and you just hit that button. And then now you have two keyframes. Now between the two keyframes, you can change how time passes. Now you can just make a longer version and then you can just play it. And if you like it, you can just save it into a, a video file. Now uh, the software by default saves all these uh, animations into individual, uh, individual uh, video files, but you can also make a, a further step and you can just, you know, um, treat them as one sequence and the software will automatically uh, create that fade in fade out effect and it will automatically uh, generate this uh, result that you can see uh, on screen now and this is a very very fast to, to render uh, it is only a few minutes maximum if you if you use a very large resolution uh, setting to uh, generate a result like this Okay, so this is what we wanted to discuss for today about the practical advices of rendering about uh, lightings and about two features, uh, the panoramic 360 and the animation. And we also discussed uh, the uh, live software itself. So let's see whether we have a few questions. I see that you were active during the, the presentation. So I think you will have a few questions. Uh, and let's see. Okay, so the first question is about um, there is an image marker augmented reality. No, the software does not uh, support augmented reality. It will create the VR result that you saw uh, previously. Uh, augmented reality is something of a, a different result with the uh, with need of very, very high computing power. Uh, and we want to uh, do something that is for the masses with which uh, which many of the people can do even your clients can uh, see at their at their home comfort without you so this is why our arch line by default has this vr feature built in uh, there is another question um, there is a question about the hardware configuration configuration and what specific configuration is my uh, workstation now my current workstation what i'm using for this presentation and for the because of the presentation now i'm doing the presentation i'm streaming i render and i also record this uh, whole thing locally on my computer so for this i use uh, um, a computer which is by, i believe it's a it's a reason uh 1600x and it has a 1660 uh, GTX uh, NVIDIA card uh, so this is exactly what I have uh, and it and it perhaps has uh, 16 megabytes uh, sorry gigabytes uh, RAM 
uh, and it is uh, able to handle this. So uh, this is not the top, not the bottom, but somewhere in between. It's it's uh, quite a powerful, but not the best that you can buy. Uh, and as you can see, the result is uh, still stunning and it's fast. Uh, okay, what effects there for weather in life? Unfortunately, nothing yet, uh, but we are aware of this need and we are continuously uh, thinking of what we can do with that. So at the moment, nothing, but uh, keep looking for the new features. We are always coming out with new things and especially about the 2020 version of live, which is coming in days. So you will uh, be noticed with the, with the new features very, very soon. Uh, you will see uh, what happens with the new feature. Unfortunately, no, no weather yet, but you will see a very nice effect. Uh, a few uh, effects for the camera and for the workflow uh, which will be even much more smooth than it was before in uh, 2019 but I don't want to uh, show the features yet you will you will learn about those okay uh, can lights be set uh, to turn on and off at certain times mm, not at the moment but uh, I can tell you that um, what you will be able to do with the new live feature, uh, you will be able to uh, easily create two different versions of that image. Okay, uh, can objects be animated along a path in life? People walking, cars driving, etc. Uh, yeah, you perhaps you you read our wish list. Uh, uh, we don't have it yet, but it is uh, also a feature that is in continuous. Uh, consideration not at the moment it will it won't be shipped with uh, the 2021st but uh, this is also something that we are discussing continuously okay so well i think it is um yeah yes you're right uh, i have a i have a question yes it's a it's a desktop computer with uh, 16 gigabyte ram and with an uh, an nvidia card uh, and the nvidia card perhaps has uh, six gigabytes uh, that is a uh, 1660 um, uh, GTX card you can uh, look at the specifics uh, on their website uh, so this is what I use uh, now it's a uh, it's uh, that that is a, a more than than average uh, graphics card uh, I, I would say but it is also because I'm using it for extreme uh, load I also need to stream everything that I'm uh, showing you and I hope there was no uh, frame drop during the presentation if Yes, uh, then I'm sorry for that. If not, then it means my computer was powerful enough to do all this presentation uh, live and also for all the calculations. Okay, so thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, also, uh, have a look at our following presentation, which will be uh, coming tomorrow. And that will be about, let me just cheat a little bit. Uh, I think it will be, yeah, it's, it will be the upholstered furniture. Uh, my colleague uh, Zoltan will talk to you tomorrow. So at the same time here, uh, at the same location, just come here and ask your questions and enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy today's session. Uh, see you next time. Goodbye.